Hi, uh, welcome to the Dad Deleted uh, podcast or blog, uh, as it is. And uh, I know it's been a long time. It's been a, a good couple of I don't know, maybe eight weeks or more since I have done a uh, an episode. Uh, I got caught up with life, and uh, quite honestly, sometimes it's just difficult to uh, to talk about this stuff. And um, but today is Father's Day. And uh, with the exception of Mother's Day, I can't imagine a, a day that's more appropriate to have a conversation about parental alienation and uh, what it's done to your family, what it's done to you personally, your finances, to your uh, relationships uh, outside of your kids, and of course, uh, last but not least, your relationship with your kids. So. Um, for all you fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Uh, I miss Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. And if you are alienated from your children, I am sorry about that. I really am. Uh, today, uh, I thought we would talk about all hope is not lost. And uh, I know it doesn't feel that way. Um, and for me personally, in my situation now, um, I don't have a relationship with my kids. Um, I'm able to, I send them um, a birthday card, uh, but that's it. Uh, and I very seriously doubt if they uh, get to read them or if they're even given the opportunity to read them, I doubt very seriously that, my, that any of my kids would be willing to uh, deal with the repercussions of actually opening that card and reading it and providing any other response other than negative. So, um, yeah, it's hard to think of positive outcomes and positive thoughts, but um, a lot of this is out of your control, especially, I mean, if it's already happened. Um, for those of you uh, who still have uh, contact with your kids, keep fighting. But I, I would, uh, I'm going to talk in the, an upcoming podcast about what you should do, and we're going to talk about uh, recommendations um, from Dr. Uh, C. A. Childress and uh, a blog post that he wrote recently that's out there on the internet that I think uh, is powerful. And boy, I wish I had read it, uh, you know, five or six years ago, or even three or four years ago, um, I, would have, uh, I would have changed my tactics, and I think I, I might have had a better outcome. Maybe. It's still up to the courts, unfortunately, a lot of times, uh, but it would have given me a better uh, tact, a better, um, a better way to go, I think. Um, but what I would say today um, is that the first thing you can do and especially this is being uh, Father's Day, it's very appropriate to remember that you're a dad and these are your kids. And no matter how much they have said in the past that uh, they dislike you or they don't want to see you or spend time with you, the truth of the matter is, is that deep down your kids love you. And they're unable to show it. Uh, imagine a hostage um, who is on camera and off camera there's a gun to that hostage's head and they've been told if you say that you're a hostage uh, we're gonna kill you so they're a hostage everybody knows they're a hostage they know they're a hostage their captors know they're a hostage, but they can't say it. They can't let other people know because it creates the risk that they'll die. Well, with kids who are alienated, they don't normally risk death, but what they do risk is alienation from the alienator. They risk rejection from that one parent, the parent who has convince them that they are the sole parent that cares about them and the sole parent that uh, will take care of them. 
um, they risk being ostracized and not just from that parent but from whatever other family structure is there and so in my situation there's a, a step parent and there's uh, step brothers and sisters and uh, that entire apparatus turns against them if they show any sign of weakness uh, and in this situation weakness uh, means showing any love or affection or acceptance of me right so your kids are in that same situation so I say that to tell you if you're watching um, this hostage situation unfold on television and you're pretty sure that this person has got a gun to their head but you just can't see the gun because it's just off camera uh, do you blame that hostage when someone asks them uh, are you here of your own free will or, or, or are you a hostage oh no no I'm here of my own free will no one's holding me hostage they're lying through their teeth but do you hold that against them probably not I, I wouldn't right well and it's the same thing here you shouldn't hold what your kids say and what your kids do and the actions that they uh, perform against you or, or the, the feelings that they say they have for you the feelings of, of hate or, or anger um, you, you can't hold that against them it's not real it feels real and you will struggle against your worst demons your you will struggle against the lesser part of yourself to not respond and it is very look there are some of us as parents that are much more forgiving there are some of us who have a lot more tolerance a lot more patience and there are those of us who don't right and then depending on the day and depending on what else is going on um, right you you could fall anywhere in the spectrum of being completely and totally in control of your emotions and your response right or being a stark raving lunatic and I can tell you right now the alienating parent is trying to drive you to stark raving lunatic they are trying to get you to show your anger to your kids because what they want to tell the kids is see I told you mom or dad boy they really they don't care about you they are so angry at you they're so bitter at you they are so mad at you and for what what did you do you didn't do anything and in one situation and in one sense they're right it's not the kids the kids are being driven to this behavior the kids are being taught this behavior uh, you know right now um, we've got a lot of social unrest in our country right and one of the memes that I see come out over and over is well racism isn't uh, it's not it's not an innate behavior it's a taught behavior it's a learned behavior right and I agree with that I don't think uh, any of us just instinctively uh, hate a person because of their color or the, their creed or uh, sexual orientation I, I you may agree or disagree with people based on what they do how they live their lives but I don't generally think people hate people um, for no reason I think they're taught uh, to either love people or to hate people and so uh, why is that any different with parental alienation right you're, you're taught to either love or hate by the actions uh, and the reactions of those around you especially your parents and so if you have a parent who is a favored parent and you're looking to that person uh, as your guidepost on how to treat other people uh, well if they teach you to hate the other parent if they teach you that that's the only acceptable uh, response or behavior uh, is rejection of the other parent then then that's what you do as a child and look this is a this is hugely a, a defense mechanism it's a survival mechanism 
and we're talking about kids and I don't care if your kid is 15 years old and I don't care if your kid is 5 years old we all have those defense mechanisms that are built into us and we use them so don't hold that against your kids and it's hard because again this is not just your kids this is there's a puppet master on the back end of this right there is a there, there's a wizard behind the curtain and they are pulling the levers and they are pushing the buttons and they are simultaneously trying to pull your levers and push your buttons while uh, they're also pulling the levers and pushing the buttons of your children so that they are creating a situation where you're in the crossfire right you're in the middle between your kids and them and it they want you to feel ganged up on they want you to feel despair they want you to feel defeat because that's what it takes uh, for them to get a reaction out of you and so the lower you get the more the greater the chances that you're going to react out of anger or out of fear because really anger comes out of fear all all the the uh, those emotions I think come out of fear the bad ones do um, you're either you feel like you're losing control you feel like you're losing your kids you feel like you've lost your kids you feel like you're um, on an island and so sometimes you respond negatively and so the key I would tell you guys is never put this on your kids I don't care what they say to you I don't care how ugly it sounds I don't care how mean-spirited their language or their looks are I don't care at all what they say or how they say it don't ever treat your kids as if they're the enemy don't ever put this on your kids because it's not in reality it's not and so here's the thing I know that when I was a kid uh, my dad my mom uh, had they mentioned to me I remember when I was young uh, like you know junior high high school and they were talking about finding yourself in a place where you might be tempted to do something wrong right and they said if you wait until you're in the moment to make the decision as to whether or not you're going to do the right thing or the wrong thing right you're making that choice they said it's too late because either the peer pressure might be too strong at that point and you and you lose face or um, if it's something um, where, where it feels good right then you're gonna fall to temptation because of the the physical feeling or the uh, the emotional feeling that you might get from doing whatever wrong thing it was so what they always told me was that you have to decide beforehand now look I'm not a perfect person I didn't always do this but there are some things where I, I did uh, I just stayed away from certain things entirely because it kept me from being in a position where I had to be tempted and so what I would say to you is you have to do that with your with your kids and with your emotional response to your kids you have to decide before you get into some altercation or before you get into some argument or some fight or some something that could escalate to you saying something horrible to your kids that you could never take back you know uh, I didn't invent this but it's a great uh, way to think about it words are like arrows because once they leave your mouth like an arrow leaves a bow you can't get it back it's gonna it's gonna land somewhere hey maybe you're lucky and it misses the target maybe you're unlucky and it hits them right in their heart and they'll carry that wound with them forever and you will too because you'll know you'll know you wish you hadn't said it and you will regret it every day for the rest of your life so just 
save yourself and save them that, that wound. And don't. Don't fire off that weapon. Don't fire that arrow that could hurt their heart. And by the way, that goes for words between spouses too. Or even just your family members. Don't say things that you will live to regret. There are words that are better left unspoken. There are a lot more words better left unspoken than are there are words that are just must be spoken. And if we remember that, then we're in a better place. And so I'll just leave you with that today. Your kids aren't the enemy. They never were. They never will be. You do have an enemy. You do have someone that wants to harm you, to hurt you. But they're just using the kids as weapons. They've weaponized your children. They are looking at your kids no differently than if uh, you were picking up a stone to put it in a slingshot and sl sling it at a, at a target. They're just looking at your kids and going, who's going to be my weapon today that I sling at this person that I hate so much? It's not the weapon's fault. It's not the stone's fault. The stone is just getting flung through the air. Your kids are getting thrown at you. It's not their choice. They didn't ask to be put in that position. So don't treat them like that. Love your kids. And let them know it's not their fault. That's one of the very last things I told my kids on the day uh, the two, you know, two days before, a day before, and then the day they left, because I wanted to make sure that the last thing they heard from me was that uh, it's not your fault. You're in a bad place. You're in a bad position, and I don't blame you at all. I love you with my whole heart. Because one day I'm hoping that my kids see through all this, and they see what really happened. And I want them to know that the last thing I told them was, you were always welcome at my house. You were always welcome to call me, to text me, uh, to show up on my door, or to call me and tell me to come get you, and I'll come get you. And I want them to know that that's, uh, that unconditional love was there and that they, there's, not, uh, there's not an obstacle. I didn't want to put an obstacle in their way where they might worry, oh gosh, can I not call Dad? because he was so angry the last time I saw him. He was so hurt the last time I saw him. I don't think I can face him. I don't think he would even want to see me. You don't want your kids thinking that. You want your kids to know that, well, mom or dad, no matter how bad it was, I remember the last thing they told me. The last thing they told me was that they loved me and that they didn't blame me and it wasn't my fault and that their door was always open. And then that way, you've got the best chance that if they do wake up one day and see what happened, you've got the best chance that they're going to reach out to you because they know that they're not going to get a thousand arrows <laughs> coming at them. They're just going to get two arms that want to hug them. And, and if you really think about it, what words would you trade for another hug from your kids? Are there any amount of words? Is there any amount of explanations or I'm sorry's or please forgive me's uh, that you would trade for a hug and for a chance to have a relationship that starts at that point and goes for the rest of your life? Is there any amount of words that would be worth losing that opportunity? I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. There's nothing. There's no amount of words that I want to hear or want to say that would be more powerful to me or more satisfying to me than to have my kids back in my life. And I just want you to think about that.
do the right thing. Love your kids. Don't put them in the middle. Tell them it's not your fault. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that no matter what happens, you'll always be there for them. And so, on Father's Day, 2020, I'll leave you with this. As always, remember, love your kids.